Today's video is laborers, and it's not a learning video about laborers. You're just going to watch me do my laborers. And so I'm going to spend some time turning in some mercenary journals and collecting mercenary journals. So that'll be fun. Uh, just to make it a little bit more fun, we're going to see how much silver that I make today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deposit all my 38.4 million silver. I have more than that stashed elsewhere on other characters. But um, we're at zero silver, and we're going to see how much money we make at the end of this, and how long it takes, and all that kind of fun stuff. And yes, I've made that kind of video before, but this time we're just going to be chilling, we're just going to be talking. And so we uh, we got some tier 5s here we're going to be turning in. I don't have too many tier 5s, uh, but uh, we do have plenty of tier 4s. And I'm just emptying out the journals, and you know, just to give me a reason to go out and fame farm and fill the journals back up. Because I spent five days not playing, and I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? And I'm like, well, I might as well fill journals. I might as well do, you know, get back into journaling and, and, and you know, get the laborers pumping again. Because these laborers, they sit in the house. They, they've had nothing to do for, like... I, I think I haven't touched my laborers in almost a full year. I, I'm going to be real. Like, I don't think I've touched laborers in, like, a full year. And it's just this one island. And let's see how much we make from just one island of Tier 5s. And the thing is, we fill these tier 5 books up insanely fast. It's ridiculous how fast we can fill the books. But we're going to uh, collect books, give new books, and rinse and repeat all the way through. I, I do have more books than I have laborers active, simply because I'm lazy and I don't feel like outfitting every single of the 100 islands. I'm only using about 20 of the islands at the moment, because any more than that, and I start to get hand cramps, and I start to lose my attention, and I just... I just really don't feel like messing with it for, uh, you know, like, here's the thing, right? I have plenty of silver. I don't need more, but if I needed more of these laborers, they're there to help me earn silver. And just this one island, 50,000 silver, which uh, in the grand scheme is not a lot. But hey, it kind of is if you're uh, a newer player. It's, it's a decent amount of silver. So I have a list of all my islands and... Uh, Let's see, we're going to this one next. Yes, I have a list, a little ledger of each and every island I need to visit to turn in the journals and at what time. It's all very neatly organized. All right, next island, here we go. We're just making raw silver, raw silver, very good um, for these mercenaries. Now, the reason that I, I have all these mercenaries and that I leveled the mercenaries is because I figured, one, I mean, this is like almost three years ago, I made this uh, this random decision. I was like, you know what, they're going to they're gonna buff these one day. They're going to buff them, and it's going to be great, and I'm going to be ready for it when they are buffed. I'm going to be absolutely fully stoked and ready to go. And uh, they haven't buffed them yet. Three years later, I'm still waiting. Still patiently waiting. I'm using this little black bunny here so that I can get a quick gallop. So that I can get between houses much, much faster than other mounts. I know, it's whatever. Oh man, journal, journal, journal. Fun times. Yep, we have uh, we have a lot more islands to cover, you guys. And, uh, you know, there's people that use, like, macros, which is cheating. You shouldn't do it. You'll get banned to do all of this clicking and movement automatically, which I can't compete with the bots. That's another problem, is um, bots... There are people that bought this kind of activity, and it's really sad to, say, to see it. it. It really sucks. Maybe one day they'll get banned, but I, I've went into the, the Russian Discord servers and just watched people in voice chat with their game being streamed, just botting this exact thing here. You hate to see it. Next island is Legend of the Cringe. What a fun island name. That's a fun island name, I think. But guys, do you... Uh, you know, let me know in the comments. I want to talk. I want to have a little labor discussion. Do you guys use laborers? Do you guys make money from laborers, and why or why not? Why haven't you started using laborers yet? It's free money for activities that you already do, right? To fill these mercenary journals, I just had to kill mobs. That's it. Not even a lot of mobs, right? And, and, and I'll show you. Like, see, see this, this mercenary journal is a tier 5. 4,368 fame to fill it. Well, guess what? Whenever I kill a tier 5 mob in a static dungeon, I get like 20,000 fame. So I feel like 5 books in one enemy. Oh, faction defense points. That's from earlier. I, I filmed a video about doing some faction stuff, and it's still going up. 
But um, <laughs> uh, the point is, is that I can pull like five or six of those dudes at once, even more sometimes, and kill them all at once and fill like 30, 40, 50 books, right? It's not a problem to fill the books. It is a little bit time consuming and does wear my fingers and wrists down having to give them to all the laborers. You would, it would be nice if there was a more user-friendly, intuitive way to deal with laborers. Like, if I could just dump all the books into the house and it auto-sorts to the laborers and they all go to work at once or something. Or if I could just access, like, like something, like a little drop-down box that said laborers. And it's like, oh, you have 700 laborers. And then just drop the stack of 700 books on the laborers and tell them to go to work. And the next day, open the interface menu and be like, okay, um, I would like to collect my 700 laborers, you know, results. Here you go. That would be cool, but that would make things a little too easy, I think. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it would be nice, but, you know, I have a lot of laborers, so. Next up is let me girdle your loins. Now, that's a... I don't know what loin girdling is. I don't know what it means to girdle loins. It just sounded really funny at the time, and so I made it. Yay, look at that. We're up to 150,000 silver in six minutes. It's not bad. It's okay. It's all right. See, laborers, they're pretty good. They're all right. Those laborers, they do the jobs that other people don't want to do. Whoa, that didn't load. Oh, no, is my internet going down again? Oh, no, something... I'm getting DDoSed, guys. My internet's being shit. My internet is being absolute poop. Uh, let's hope it um it stays up for the video, though. Otherwise, I'll have to cut this into parts, which means I have to edit it, which means more time until I can publish. Boohoo. Uh, so I've been I, I've had a little a bit of I haven't been uploading as much as I normally do, and uh, it's just the the fire the passion is is a little bit gone. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you guys for a little bit since you made it seven minutes into the video. You know, I have I'm 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 approaching 700 Albion video uploads, right? If you don't count the I don't know if I count the shorts or not, but yeah, I'm like I'm like close to 700 videos. And uh you know, I I had a big come on game, stop lagging. I I had a big drive to um to get to 100k subs, which I did, which wasn't thanks to this game, it was thanks to Starfield by the way. Uh, and, and I got the YouTube plaque, the little YouTube thing. I'll, I'll make a video eventually about it. I have to borrow my girlfriend's phone and have her record it or something. But, uh, hold on. Uh, let's see. Next is Sniff Belly. Okay. There we go. Let me sniff that belly. Fun guild names. Always fun guild names. And, uh, oh, it's lagging. Anyway. What I was trying to say is, is once I hit that 100k sub, you know, milestone, once I got the YouTube little plaque, uh, and I got the check mark next to my name, it's like, okay, I guess, uh, I guess I can chill for a while, right? That, that was the first thing that's kind of dampened the, the fires of creation, I suppose. The second thing is that, um, y you can't stream snipe people in this game, right? Or at least I can't, because other people, like, other people have gotten away with it. People tell me all the time, you even streamers are like, bro, I reported these stream snipers, and SBI did nothing about it. We had video proof. We had, we know that they're doing it. They even... Oh, come on. My internet's crapping out. Man. Boo. Boo. Ooh. I'm getting DDoSed. I'll be right back. Oh, oh, oh. Are we, are we back? Okay, we're back. We're back. It's not... The DDoS is not strong enough yet to kick me. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. Gotta make sure that they're, uh... The, the laborers are, you know, doing their job. Anyway, so, uh, the streamers have told me that, you know, they have stream snipe problems, and that when they report it to SBI, SBI does nothing about it. They even tell them, hey, we're not going to do anything about it. So, the fact that they're willing to ban me for a week, because I beat up Nazori in a yellow zone, when he flagged up on me, and attacked me because I was in a dungeon that he happened to be in, you know... I knew he was in the dungeon, of course. Of course I did, right? But um, the the fact that I just simply defended myself and, you know, had some help, of course, of course. Y you know, you know. We didn't even steal his dungeon, and, you know, we could have stayed and kept breaking his gear or whatever. It, it doesn't matter, right? 
Like, like because I'm getting punished for something that no one else is getting punished for, it's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like, why am I bothering? Why am I wasting my time? Uh, another thing, too, is... Hold on, where are we going next? Uh, oh, this one's a uh, fun little guild island name. There we go. And... Uh, <laughs> Give me some sex. Give me some sex. Give me, give me, give me some sex. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, an another reason too is that I've been playing this game for well over, I think, three-ish years now, and uh, the real time I haven't really made any friends. I, I, d I haven't made any friends playing this game, and I know there's you guys are like, oh, I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend. Okay, you say that, and then you join the Discord, and then you don't pass the questionnaire. We can't be friends. If you can't pass that question, that questionnaire for people that, that that are compatible with me, they pass it in like two minutes, and they're like, "That was the easiest thing ever." But like, we're just too different, you and me, man. We're we're just way too different, and I, I hate to say it, but I I gotta like I gotta find a new game to play, man, because this game's boring as shit. I'm getting unfair treatment from the game devs, and, you know, like, I, I was looking at Robin Hinkey's Twitter the other day, and that dude is so anti-freedom of speech, it's, it's gross, man, it's, like, bro, the literal head honcho of the video game is trying to argue with Elon Musk about freedom of speech, and how it's wrong, bad, and, I, you know, I can't do nothing, I can't be like, uh, hey, Robin... You know, like, um, if they take away freedom of speech, then they're gonna take away, eventually take away your freedom of speech, right? That's how it works. Yeah, you don't want to say bad World War II memes or whatever. I get that. It's fine. But eventually, if people can get away with taking that away from you, then they can get away with taking other speech from you as well. Like, oh, you don't like pineapple on pizza? Into the gulags you go. And I'm not joking. That's really how it... Like, you get a world leader that hates pineapple on pizza, and then you say that you like it? Oh, that's a crime. You're, uh, you're, you know, you're going to jail, bro. And that's the real. I know that's silly, okay? I know that's silly, but eventually, if you give, if you, if you let them take one, if, if you let them get that foot in the door, it's over. And, and that's how a lot of people feel. I, I know that he's from a, you know, from a whole different part of the world. And with not similar group thing to, to the part of the world I'm at, I, I understand. And it's his damn game. He can do whatever the hell he wants with it. I also understand, right? It's like, I gotta find a new game. Because I'm bored. Bro, I haven't played in like five freaking days, man. And I know I said that in my previous video, but that's because I filmed my videos in bulk. Uh, when I have energy and feel social to talk to myself without feeling awkward and down and, and crap. And speaking of, like, my health is massively declining. And I don't know if I can... I, I don't know if I can do anything about it, because I can't afford to go to the hospital. I, uh, I might have pneumonia. I, 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 I really feel like I, I have it. And, uh, last time I went to a hospital for something like that, it was, uh, $90,000, which I don't have, and I don't have the capacity to make. And, hell, playing Albion isn't going to make ever make that amount of money. Ever. And <laughs> playing Starfield might, if it, if it was still, like, popular when it came out and I played it for, like, a couple years. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Like, I could probably hit that in two years if, if Starfield was popular. But it's not. That game is dead as fuck. And so... <laughs> What am I supposed to do? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Oh, good job. Oh, yeah. Let me go work at McDonald's. And um, and that doesn't give me a discount for hospitals. That it's not going to pay the bills. I'm basically screwed. I basically have to hope that I naturally recover, which I don't think you kind of do from, from that. But, um, oh, come on, game. It's not the game. It's my damn internet. It's, uh, it's B&D DOS, again, I'm telling you, but, uh, the, the, the point is, is that, like, oh, I don't even remember what I was talking, oh, yeah, yeah, health decline, that's right. So, I haven't actually been to a gym in several months. The gym that I did go to, they, they weren't making enough money, so they shut down, and then they were bought out by a different company gym, but it's... It's owned by uh, a certain affiliation in my area. Let's, let's, let's just say that. It's owned by, by gang members. Real talk. It, it really is. 
And um, if you're not in their gang, you basically don't get allowed in. It's it's like those. I I know you guys aren't in the ghetto, and you probably don't understand what I'm saying. But um, and Matt, okay, let, let me give an example of something that actually happened in, in my area like 10, 12 years ago, right? Someone opened a video game arcade, right? They had a sign out. Um, they they had uh, you know. Uh, oh, this is a video game arcade. You know, they had a public phone number you could look up in the phone book and call them. And so you call them and you're like, hey, what kind of arcade games do you have? And they're like, oh, we have Donkey Kong and Mario and and Pac-Man. And I'm like, cool. And they're like, well, you can't come here and play unless you're a member. And I'm like, okay, how do I buy a membership? And they're like, you don't. And I'm like, well, how do I become a member? And they're like, well, you got to know somebody. And I'm like, well, who do I need to know? And they're like, well, that's need to know information. And it's like, um, excuse me? And this really pissed me off because I'm, I'm a gamer. And I, I really hate these kinds of places being a front when they're using an arcade as their front. Okay. And so I, I go to this place in person and it's, um, it's locked behind two metal gates, which I climb over at the time. You know, I was a little bit of a rap scallion, you know, little scampy, you know, scoundrel dude. And, uh, you know, I, uh, it's basically a building that is a mobile home of sorts with two very, like, way larger than I, I could ever naturally become. Two extremely large bouncers out front. And, yeah, I'm getting DDoSed hard here. I, I am just lagging like crazy. And so I, I, I get there. And I, I don't I don't walk in front of them or nothing. I, I stay I stay in the distance and I and I scope the place out. Because I didn't have anything to do. I didn't have anything going on. And I I noticed the clientele going in and out of this building are not your typical arcade gamer goers. The people going in and out of the building are uh gamblers. That's the best way I can describe their body types. The people going in and out are not people that enjoy video games. The people that go in and out are not people that you would see normally at an arcade setting. The people going in and out are people you would see at a very illegal gambling site. And, of course, when they open the doors, I can peek in and I see some slot machines. I know what slot machines look like. I've, I've went gambling before. And uh, where I'm from, gambling is illegal. It's not allowed. You, you, you can't have a casino. But these guys, yeah, they were running a little casino. And they were calling it an arcade. And back then, I, I was a different YouTube channel, and I wasn't that big, and I, was, and I wasn't local also. I had my face on that channel, because I used webcam and stuff, and so I was like, well, do I use my audience for this, or do I not? I don't know, right? Okay, we gotta go to the personal islands now, because uh, that was, yeah, that was my last oh. guild island for mercenaries. But I have a bunch of personal islands for mercenaries. Yay! And, uh, oh wait, no, 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 wrong one. I'm, I skipped myself. My own island is... Uh, mercenaries. Yeah, okay, so anyway. So I scope it out. And it, it, I walk up to them, you know? I'm letting them know that they, they fucked with the wrong person, right? Not letting me in. I would have been fine if, they, you know, I even try to reason with them. I'm like, hey... I want to become a member. I called, and uh, they said that it's on a need-to-know basis, and they're like, well, you can't get in. I'm like, I have money. Let me gamble. I know this is there's a casino in there. I'm not, I'm not a cop. I'm a YouTuber. And I, at the time, I worked in retail, and I'm like, I work at a grocery store. Here's proof. And I showed them my, like, store's name badge. And I even pointed out, like, I'm just down the road. You can see me at work. I'm not a cop, I swear. I don't know any police. I, I just want to give you my money and gamble and play some slots and some poker. And they're like, no, you can't. You can't come in. You in, need to do invite only. You're not a member, you know. And I'm like, come on, what do I got to do, man? Let me talk to the guy in charge, something, anything, please. Can I work here? You know, can I? Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't muscular at the time or anything, so like they're just kind of like laughing at me. And there's no way I could fight them at all. And they were armed, too, you know. They had open carry weapons, so it's like, uh-huh. But, uh... <laughs> You know, I was like, come on, please, let me in. And they wouldn't let me in. And I, I called, I would call every day. Every day I would call this place and be like, please let me in. <laughs> you know, I'll meet you somewhere. I'll take you out. 
you know, let, just let me play. I just want to play the please. I felt so like alienated, right? I felt so like I just wanted to. I just wanted to, you know, find a new place to hang out and spend some money and chill. And and, and this fake arcade was really pissing me off. And they would not let me in, no matter how much I badgered or begged or pleaded or anything. And so I um, I was like, okay, well, if I'm not allowed to come here and play. And I, I would bug the people com coming in and out because, like, I would, like, I could be on the side of the street where they can't fucking legally do anything. And I would bug the people that would, like, go in and leave. And I'm like, how'd you get in? Who do you know? How do I get in? And they wouldn't tell me nothing. They were like, oh, man, it's, you don't want to, you don't want to know, kid. It's dangerous, you know, and, uh, oh, you're barking up the wrong tree, you know, you could get yourself killed, son. And, you know, um, a, a lot of it was, uh... I'm I'm a minority where I live, and um, they they don't want me in there. But uh, <laughs> sad to say, really. But hey, you know that's life. But I I tried everything. I tried everything, and they they wouldn't let me. So I'm like, okay, this is war. This is war, and so I can't exactly say what all the stuff that I did. But uh, let's just say that they were getting round the clock calls from people and everyone in the whole city knew what they were and uh i every single place you could think of was alerted to their presence and police were constantly visiting after this and there was many investigations and a month later they shut down like, I, I devoted my entire life outside of work and outside of the YouTube that I was doing at the time to spread awareness of this place because they wouldn't let me gamble at their stupid little, like, <laughs> like it, it was a tiny little trailer building, too. It wasn't like a big establishment or a business or anything, right? And here's the thing. I, I, I don't want to talk... I Actually, no, I shouldn't. I, I was going to mention how I, I have people I know that run these kinds of businesses and I even like like I asked, I'm not going to mention how I know them or who they are I asked them I'm like do y'all know these people and they're like yeah we don't know them they're just some nobodies they're just copying us you know but they're doing it stupid they're just doing it out you know out in the middle of town right you got to go to the country and and stuff and it's like bro like you don't know it you don't you have no idea who these people are right and I didn't either I didn't get any names I didn't get any, anything right and I scoured, like, I, I did my detective work, and I could not find nothing on them. But, but, you know, when the entire town knows what they are, it was over. It was, and, and, and I, like, every once in a while, maybe like once a month, I, I, I Google around to see if I can find any of these people to see if they sprung up elsewhere, posing as an arcade. If they posed as anything else, like a floral shop, or a pet store, or, you know, a vacuum repair place or a VCR repair place, which, like, who the hell does that? Like, no one, no one has VCRs these days, okay? I wouldn't care. I would just be like, they can do their thing, and it's all Gucci. I don't give a damn. But because they posed as a freaking video game arcade and then wouldn't let me be a part of it, I had to do something about it. I, I got my damn revenge, and that that is a... I'm proud of what I did. And, uh, I'm not marked for death. They're not a gang. They're just some random, you know, people trying to do a quick cash grab with some old machines they, they got at an auction. That's all. It's not illegal to own the machines. It's illegal to, you know, like, make an establishment for other people and take their money. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it's whatever. Like, the, the town I'm in is filled with those damn machines. You go to a gas station, and they got, they got them going. And uh, it's funny because, like, they, it's not a legal loophole. It's just that the police don't care enough. It's just not, it's not their, it's, it, it, like, like two little slot machines inside a gas station, they don't really care to shut down because, well, if they do, they can't shut down the gas station. They can just find the person that owns it because they're, like, within the limit of not jail time, I guess. And then they just put the machines back out. Or, like, oh, well, the machines only pay, you know, you can only buy products in the store with it or some bullshit. And it's just, like, they have to go through courts, and it's just a, it, it's just a whole bunch of, like, it's too much of a headache for the police to deal with, right? And, uh, yeah, those machines suck, but they're everywhere, right? But because this one place would not let me be a part of their thing, mm-mm, 
well, then you don't get to exist. You, you do not get to pose as an arcade when I exist in the same town as you. I don't know how I got on this tangent uh, talking about a gym, but yeah. So this new company bought the gym out that I used to go to, and it's owned by gang members. You know, violent ones. Not, not, like, not like mafia peace dudes that just want to, like, do their business. No, these are like... Th th they just do violence. They don't, they don't, like, sell stuff or run a business. I guess the gym would be their business. But... They just commit violence. They just burn things and tag things and hurt people, right? So it's like, okay, I don't want to go to that gym, right? It'd be like 2 in the morning, I'll get jumped by 10 guys, no thanks. And uh, all the other, unfortunately, all the other gyms in my area, it's the same story. It's, it's owned by this group or this faction. It's owned by these types of people. It's owned by da-da-ba-da-da. Or, you know, like, uh, I, there's one that's not owned by a faction, but they, they're, they're open from, like, 8 in the morning until 3 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, three days a week, and it's, like, $100 a month. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I, I can't afford that, and that's stupid. All right. Let's go. <laughs> I'm not going to wake up at 8 in the morning to go to a gym. And uh, you you know I when I when I when I go by those places they they're always packed and full and just so so <laughs> we were talking about how my health is declining and so I haven't been to the gym in a long time a real long time my body is debilitating and my cardio is just completely like I gas out easy uh, I ran for eighteen minutes today yes eighteen minutes and I was completely out of breath and I I'm still burning from it man. Hours later, like it's been like four or five hours, and my chest still hurts, and I'm just, I'm just winded, bro. Like, only eighteen minutes, just a little, not, not like a sprint. You can't sprint eighteen minutes. Show me a person that could sprint eighteen minutes. No, just a regular run, just a regular run. Eighteen minutes, I'm out. What the, what, what the hell? What happened? What happened, bro? And so I just, I just feel it in my bones and my body that I can't lift nearly as much as I used to either. It's like, man, I'm a, I'm vulnerable now. Like people, there's people that are probably stronger than me. Well, of course there are, but um, but you know, like when, when you get strong, I, I know not everyone that watches me like does any kind of fitness stuff, but when you get strong and then you lose that strength, it's like it makes you worried. It makes you feel weak and vulnerable and susceptible to attacks, right? Because in, in, in my strongest, healthiest state, I feel like I could run from any fight, like a six-on-one, or I could take on at least a three-on-one of normal, non-bodybuilding, strength-building people without weapons. <laughs> that, that's how I honestly felt. Like freaking Superman, right? Give me a sec. Uh, let's see, where am I going now? Ready to leave? Fringendary, yeah, there we go. And, and, and so, it's like, what am I supposed to do? And I know, like, someone's gonna be like, well, do calisthenics, bro. Do, get some home little weights. Get some, get some dumbbells and some kettlebells and go at it. And it's like, oh, man, like, that's beginner shit. Now, calisthenics, you know, I've always, like, respected people that hardcore do it because they can do crazy little feats of, you know, like, oh, and you can squat down on one leg and twist it behind their other leg while doing a pistol squat, you know? It's like, I can't do that. I'm not that flexible and, you know, whatever, right? But, like, then I then I go do, like, a three-plate deadlift or whatever, which is not the hardest. And uh, and they're like, wow, and they can't even, they can't even barely do two-plate. I'm like, you can't do, like, my first day of deadlifting, I, I was able to do a two-plate deadlift. And I'm just a freak of nature, bros. Like, I'm just a weird monstrosity. I know not everyone can start, like, that two-plate deadlift, but it's I've always been able to do it. Like, hell, <laughs> Mr. Beast had a video recently where he he's doing a two-plate deadlift, and he's, like, wobbling a bit. He's wobbling. And this is a guy that works out every single day. And I'm like, how long have you worked out every single day and you're wobbling on two-plate deadlift? I don't know about that, man. That's that's weird. Like you gotta, what's going on there, man? And I, I don't know. I'm just, I've always like, I feel like I, it's not an isekai cheat code. It's more like a, I just got the genetics, man. Like like when I was a kid, I was always the fastest kid. I was always the strongest kid. I wasn't the tallest kid. I wasn't the hairiest kid. But uh, 
I couldn't find anyone like like there would be people like that would lift as teenagers, and I'm I'm just like, oh, let me try, and I just do it my first try, and like, whoa, dude, you're trolling. Oh no, bro, I'm not trolling. This is my first time trying this. And they're like, no way. I'm like, nah, dude. It's just how it is. It's like when, when you grow up in the ghetto, like, like as a child, I didn't have like the, the video games and the computers and shit. Um, it was like, hey, let's go outside and play. And I would just run around a forest or run around um, and play in construction zones. And, you, you, you know, you go to a construction site and, you know, during like a hot day or there's no one there, they leave all the equipment and stuff. So you... There's a lot of things you can climb in and climb around on, and so I'd be jumping on all the the pallets of uh, like tile and roofing stuff, and you know they'd be they'd leave those big excavators out, and I you know like jump up, grab a hold, and play P Prince of Persia, but but in real life kind of thing, you know, grabbing and holding and climbing stuff, and running and jumping, and and of course you know being in the ghetto, you get chased a lot. You you have to run for your life as a child. I'm not even kidding. Okay. You get chased by rival kids, you get chased by adults, you get chased by everybody as a, as a child in the ghetto. And so, it, it keeps you fit, it keeps you healthy, it keeps you on your toes, and uh, you're way more battle-hardened and experienced than the other softy kids at school who grew up in the nice skated communities and the rich, you know, uh, two-story family-owned houses and stuff, and... It's just, uh, I don't know. So I don't think it's all genetics, really. You know, I think it's just grew up poor. And you get a little buffed your strength for that, I guess. Hmm. Alright, we're almost done. We're almost done with our mercenaries. Look at our look at our silver. 658,000 so far. Look at that. In 30 minutes, you know. That's uh, that's 1.2 million per hour. That's not bad, isn't it? Isn't that pretty cool? Uh, where are we at? We're on Elliot, uh, Elliot Island. <laughs> I'm not going to say the full name. You can read it yourself. It's a fun name. I I could have saved him. I could have taught him the ways, got him a GF. He would have been... He, he, we'd be like besties, right? But maybe that's his parasocial crap, you know, speaking. People think about that with me. They're like, oh, I could save Soul Binge. I could save him. Can't save me, bro. And, uh, man, I feel like tier, tier 4 journals got a little bit nerfed. A little bit nerfed. Uh, with the silver that they give. They used to give more back in the day. I'm pr Yeah, I mean, at least that's how I remember it. I don't know. Um, oh, speaking of, uh, you guys know that there was another time shift? There was another time shift. Apparently, there's going to be another one on the 3rd of December. Yes, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's, um, I'm just going to, you've heard of the Mandela effect, right? You've heard of all the weird changes, like how Fruit of the Loom used to have a cornucopia icon. Um, did you, okay, uh, question time, you have to let me know in the comments since you made it 32 minutes into this video. Did, did let me know all the things you agree with, okay? So, uh, George of uh, Curious George, Curious George. I I remember him having a tail, and I, he he's a little monkey, you know, from like a children's storybook or whatever. And he had a tail because I remember him hanging upside down in books. And if you if you Google it, if you try to look it up, he does not have a tail in this dimension. We are not, I am not the same Benji that you guys grew up with, or whatever, okay? I'm a different Benji from a different timeline, from a different dimensional shift. Okay, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are different from when I grew up. For instance, uh, the, the size of Iceland, got, or Greenland, got super huge. Uh, Brazil used to be lined up with the center of Texas, which is, it's not anymore. If you check the world map, it is absolutely not. Uh, let's see, Timid Miner. Yep, there we go. And uh, what else? Oh, Pikachu's tail. Uh, it's apparently not black. C-3PO's leg is silver in this dimension for some reason. Um, whenever Luke and Darth Vader do their fight, I remember him saying, No, I am your father, not Luke, I am your father. You know, that's another one. Man, there's a bunch. Uh, it's Baron Steen Bears, not Baron Stain Bears. Because, like, who is named Baron Stain? No one. No, no, nothing is. Um, Jiffy became Jiff, which, uh, you know, that's a thing. What else do we have? We have, um... Uh, oh, the, the big one. Everyone argues over the Shazam, um... 
the, I forget the actor's name, but like they're like, oh, he was in a genie movie, and you're like, no, that's the Shaq movie, but Kazam, but but but. Now, in, in my timeline, there was the genie movie. It wasn't a movie; it was a TV series called uh, Shazam. But Sinbad, that's the actor's name, Sinbad, right? Except in my timeline, he was. It, it wasn't a movie. It was a. It was like a, a TV series. And it was about him, he was a genie in, in the series, but he was not, he didn't have his powers. So he was a genie that had his powers lost or stolen, I forget the plot. And he had to get his powers back, and that was what the TV series was about. Him going on adventures, and he had, uh, you know, he, he kind of dressed similar to Aladdin, I guess, from Disney. And uh, he had a little Tolwar, I think it's called, or a Scimitar, I don't know, I don't know. The, the the sword name, but he had, he had a little sword and he went on adventures and met characters and stuff. It was a little TV action drama. Looking for safe and uh, yeah, I totally remember that, but it doesn't exist at all. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of people are like, oh, he was in a movie, you know, with kids. It was like a kids movie. I'm like, no, that's not how it was at all. I'm I'm in a completely different dimension. There's the spelling of Chick Fil A, you know, that was like like chick like chick flick like chicken. Not not C H I K. That's that's weird. You know that that happened. Um, Febreze is spelt Febrez in this dimension, but it, in my dimension, it was spelled Febreze, like a breeze of wind. And uh, you know, I remember all these things vividly, right? Fruit Loops was spelled fruit, like the actual word fruit, not F R O O T. Um, so that's that's another one. This is a bunch of st stuff. Uh, Carmen San Diego. A lot of people say that she wore yellow, and uh, I can vividly remember that she never wore yellow. She always wore red. That was her color. Was red, like a crimson red suit. And uh, so I, I don't know about that one. A lot of people are like, "Oh, her, she used to wear yellow, and now it's red." And like, it's always been red. So I'm just from I'm just from a weird dimension. So my my theory over the course of my life has always been that. Um, Instead of dying, you get warped to a dimension where you evade death. So let's say you're sickly ill, and you just, and you know, I'm sure a lot of you have been very ill at some point in your life, and uh, you recover. Well, in the dimension that you left behind, you died. And uh, like, I, I remember a lot of near death experiences. Like when I was a kid, like I was like a very little kid, maybe like four or five years old, I was running out to, to, to my mom's car to get in, to go home, and and, you know, be away from school or whatever, right? Last island. Last island, the Loin Girdler's Island. Back to that again. Yes. And, uh... I remember at the very last second, she pulled me back because I was about to run out into the road and get splattered by a speeding car. And this, and back in that dimension, there was no such thing as school zones or, you know... A school zone is whenever you go, like, 20 miles per hour, uh, you know, driving near a school. Well, my first dimension didn't have school zones. And me being pulled away at the last second was me being warped to another dimension, I'm pretty sure, right? But, um, you know, I was very young, so I don't really have any memories of what changed then. But uh, the, the more you die, the more dimensions you get warped to, and things just get weirder and weirder. Also, in my dimension... Uh, Mandela did die in prison at 68. That, that, that was a real thing. That happened. Apparently he didn't in this dimension, okay? Um, there was other celebs, too, that are somehow alive or dead or died at different times and stuff. And, um, there, there's another one, too. Um, the, the one, one dimension, and this is, this is gonna shock a lot of people, because this is Albion-related, okay? There's, there's a certain streamer, I won't say his name, but, uh, in my dimension, he full died. He full died. He's dead, he's gone. There were, like, everyone was felt bad. Oh, man, that, that sucks. You know, I had a little online memorial for him and stuff. Uh, which, uh, allegedly I bombed. <laughs> right? Which I, I've never, I've never bombed an Albion funeral. I would love to, but I never did. And in this dimension, he's alive. He is fully alive. He still streams. And, yeah, it's, you know, it's like, what the hell? That guy died. <laughs> I jump dimensions where he's somehow alive again. Okay, whatever, cool. You know, that's neat. Uh, so yeah, let me know what dimension you come from. Do you do you remember the Fruit of the Loom, you know, stuff? You, I, I don't know, man. It's just, eh, that's what I really, oh, you're just remembering wrong. No, I know my damn memories. I'm not memorying wrong. 
Oh, all right. We have 47 journals left. So all of those mer- all of those journals, it took about 39 minutes, 40 minutes, of just chilling. 747,000... 47 silver. 747047. What a fun number. What a weird number. But yeah, that's that's mercenary journals. And mercenary journals, they're not the best. But they're alright. They're they're easy to fill. They're very, very easy to fill. Looking at my journals now, I have 183 blues and 216 reds. I can fill both of these up completely. Like like this would take 10 minutes to fill. This would maybe take 20 to 30 minutes, maybe. Maybe a little bit less. It really depends. Uh, if the um, if the static is upgraded right now, is it? Let's see. That one is not, and this one is also not upgraded. So not right now. We're not filling them right now. That's the video. Thank you for <laughs> chilling with me while I did my laborers. Yay! Um, I gotta write down. Let's see. Uh, hold on. Twelve one twenty three. The time is going to be twelve forty one. 12.41 a.m. Mercenary journals are ready. Yes. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for listening. Let me know in the comments what you think about any of this stuff I rambled on about. I'll see you in the next video. And if you don't click the video on the right side of the screen, you're going to be involved in a time warp. And something's going to change. And you're going to know it changed. And no one's going to believe you. They're going to be like, no, was it? So you better click the video.